shrinking. Right. Why are you looking? Yeah, they just gonna shrivel up right, and that's right. it. It disappears. We're live. Live. <laughs> it's all what shame. Good man. Good man. We're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh wait, I don't have the show notes yet. Uh, <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the uh, Mid Youth Universe Saga series. Uh, joining me today, we have you know Steve, Max, and Van coming back. Yeah. Um, how you guys doing, man? First day of December, hey. First day. Of, yeah. Merry uh, Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Winter yeah. is here. Winter is finally <laughs> here. <laughs> It's no longer coming. too early to say Merry Christmas, though. It's never no. too early to say Merry Christmas. First of December it's is It's not okay. a Christmas episode, though. It's not. It's the winter winter warm-up. I don't know. Winter warm-up? The winter warm-up. Winter yeah, warm-up. I like, I like that. First of December is when decorations come up. Man. Where it's acceptable for decorations to come up. I mean, have you heard the Christmas songs in the malls yet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's unacceptable, though. How about next week we green screen a Christmas bazaar in the back? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know what's what's gonna play more the Y U U song or Mariah Carey's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just walked down welcome screaming that now. She oh, did a so Every time I walk into a welcome or a Seven Eleven, I just go you you go you, 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 you. <laughs> and they always they never fail to laugh when they go you and I go me no you. <laughs> oh, that's the best, man. Oh my gosh. Um, For those who don't know, uh, Y U U is Hong Kong's premiere. Point system, <laughs> but it's it's an I, everything, isn't it? Hey, it's yeah, Seven Eleven. It's part Ikea. of the company. It's actually from the company I work in. Oh. So you are the reason. <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> oh, but, you. Days, but I work in the conglomerate that owns the business that is the reason behind you. Conglomerate. You call it you, not why you. The Lex Luthor. Sorry. <laughs> of course you would. Because <laughs> <laughs> I work in a conglomerate. conglomerate. That's hilarious, man. That's hilarious. And so. Um, <laughs> this week, <laughs> I said, "Why did you make fun of my leg?" <laughs> I get that on my head now, man. Like, this villainy just. That's just gonna sit in there. No, you. <laughs> your points <Yeah>. are mine. <laughs> Give me them points. <laughs> oh my days. Okay, today we're gonna be talking about um, confidence versus ego. That's a, that's a heavy topic, Mike. That's a, yeah, man. He's always bringing the the, the weighty stuff, you know, and. Uh, you know, to, to kick things off, if you guys are on an island, like yeah. a deserted island, right? And um, you have three items to bring. So you, you've got your water, you've got your, um, you got a knife, you've got a lighter, that's all sorted. But three other items, what would you bring? Well, I, I want to be cheeky here. I'm going to say I would bring a, um, I would bring a cow. Oh, I would bring a cow, but a very unattractive cow. Because, what? yeah, because... How, how is that going to fit in the backpack? It's <laughs> a <laughs> backpack. See, you didn't say anything about the size. It's a... <laughs> Yo, that's, that's true. Yeah, okay. You, you, um, you bring a cow. Uh, it has an to be a backpack. Cow. It has to be a backpack. An ugly cow. <laughs> because then I won't empathize with it. Because yeah. <laughs> then you won't have sex with it. Because that's what Steve <laughs> does. <laughs> 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 Why you is the cow? Because the cow. The cow. <laughs> then you don't get attached to it, and then you can, you know, obviously um, harvest it for its meat. Use the hide for a blanket and a tent. You could use the bones for tools. You know. <laughs> you <laughs> you <laughs> He's gonna fashion of a, a cow vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a pygmy cow. Well, so and, and in the backpack. What would you name that the cow? That's a cheeky uh, asshole. Because then I wouldn't feel bad about it. <laughs> the show. But, you gotta go. You but gotta then go. it's you use the cow once, or you milk it, so it lasts longer. Yeah. Uh, if you kill it, it, then you can only use it once. Well, you know, milk goes sour. No, but the you milk know? keeps but the, the it's cow still edible. The cow keeps producing milk. Yeah. yeah. You you just, know, but don't cows only produce milk when they have babies? Or like no, no. all year round. Because there's dairy. There, the dairy farms are like. Can we Wikipedia that? Hey Google. I can't connect to the oh. Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to check the connection settings in the Google Home. Forgot about oh, that. Oh, uh, Steve is so poor yes. he can't even afford Wi-Fi. That's why the, the uh, show. Like and subscribe. That's right. We, we need some money. We need uh, the studio right now is experiencing some technical difficulties. Uh. We have no Wi-Fi in the house. That means no, <laughs> no daddy man. So technically, we're just like right. stranded on an island. Okay. Oh, yeah. I need a, so I need a pregnant cow. So Steve's gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
double trouble. Yeah. So Once now, it gives birth, I get to raise the next one. Oh my god. All right. What, hey. what, what, what about you, Max? What about you, Max? What, what, what? Name one item that you bring. One of the three. One of the three. I think I definitely bring a a notebook, so I could uh, map out the island. You know, talk to myself, write to myself. Is 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 a pen part of? The notebook, or is the pen your second item? She brings the notebook and a pen. You know, pen and paper, it's a, it's a bundle of deal, right? Now, would you want a pen because that can run out of ink? Or like, That's a good question. Yeah. Mm. I think. Um, <laughs> he was unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> Just like an Amy with the hard one. Like um, yeah, I think pen and paper, that would be my go to. Okay. Yeah. To map out the island. Map out the island, mm -hmm. record my do thoughts, you know, send little <laughs> messages in a bottle. It's like a little circle. <laughs> <laughs> draw, stick, draw stick figures and be like, yes, these, these are my friends. <laughs> I like, yes. Talk to my imaginary friends. Well, actually, that, that was going to be my answer, too. Like, I would bring oh, okay. paper and uh, a pen, because I would take that time to, to, to improve my sketching and drawing. Like, okay. What makes you think you're getting off this island? No, I'm assuming I'm not going to get off this island. Wow. You guys have the RT answers. I mean, I don't know. Would you want to be saved or not? What are you going to eat when you go hungry? You like the paper? Coconuts. Or what are you... I don't know. We got the hot How deserted? Yeah, how, yeah, how deserted is the island? It's, and you're surrounded by water. There's fish everywhere, dude. Yeah. I'll bring a fish. Didn't you pump. see Castaway? How are you like, going to catch fish yeah. with a notebook? Didn't you see Castaway? Like, Tom Hanks learned how to throw a spear and hit a tiny fish in like two years. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect throw. Oh, see, yeah. but I would bring a fishing pole. Therefore, oh. I don't have to do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. fishing pole, that's a yeah. good so one. So we are not fitting them in backpacks after all. <laughs> no, you can fit a fishing pole in a backpack. You, you can, can yeah. It's, yeah. It's, you get it, a foldable one. Yeah, yeah. Foldable. A foldable one. But then would you want to be rescued or not? You want to come back to modern civilization or not? Would you? Oh. I don't know. Yeah, right. Mm. If I had good company, maybe not. You just stick figure people that you <laughs> in your notebook? <laughs> that's a, I think it's a better question. Would you want to come back? Let's say you're on this island and you're by yourself. So, uh, so you, it's you're self sustaining, right? Yeah. Um, would you want to be rescued? I mean, come back to bills like COVID, oh, bills like Trump. Or, I don't know, <laughs> well, he's like out. The world, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. like, the world still seems to be in like constant collapse. Like, yeah. Bills. I think the first is, bills would be like one thing, right? Like, it's so expensive to be alive. Like on an island, you're just. <laughs> what's is running always right yeah. like yeah <laughs> no need for a wi-fi guy because there's no wi-fi so. we, we we seem to all have this idea of the island where it's very fruitful there's coconuts there's running water <laughs> well, then you gotta, it's big oh. enough to need to write a map out <laughs> all right so is the island just like a one palm tree and like five meters square well, we don't know can right? you we, so for the next episode i demand a map of this island <laughs> map this island. Right. so this is the island in question <laughs> But then, um, it's mid mid youth island. The mid youth island, yeah. Uh, the party okay. never ends. <laughs> um, that's interesting. So I guess I guess it would bring stuff to keep us entertained. You and I are thinking the same. To we need to feed ourselves. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking fish, but you want to eat your your mm -hmm. pet cow. Well, she's pregnant, so I'll raise her child and make him. It's like um, half, I'll name half him mutant child. Half I'll name him like Michael centaur. Davidson. <laughs> Michael Davidson. It's got <laughs> Steve's legs, but. The cow's upper body. There's some big legs. There's a lot of meat there. <laughs> like a minotaur. Like, like the reverse. Yeah. Oh, that's like terrifying, man. That's terrifying. That's going to be a fruitful cow. Wow. Okay. Okay. Back to the show. Uh, today's topic is confidence and ego, right? The definition of confidence here is the feeling or belief that one can have faith in or rely on someone or something. That's the Oxford de uh, definition, right? It's very formal. Mm. Um, do you guys think that it's... It's a natural, like people are just born with confidence, or is it something that you that you that you gain? Is it what's it called? Nature versus nurture, nurture. right? Is is confidence one of those things where you know you can have two people? <sighs> we have this island with Steve's, you know, cow children, yeah. and both are raised the same Michael point. Davidson. <laughs> Michael Davidson and uh, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy was Janice. Would Janice mind if Steve had sex with a cow? Oh. <laughs> I mean, he's on an island, though, right? <laughs> Mom's the word. She's wrote me off for Nobody dead. knows. Yeah. <laughs> what happens in the island stays in the island. Stays in the island. Okay, so these, actually, these two are raised yeah. in the exact same environment. Would one be more confident than the other, based purely on genetics, or is mm -hmm. it now? I, I think it's, you, you, like, nurture the confidence in a person. And being, like, Steve's children, they'd be, like, super confident. Man. 
Interesting. <laughs> now, I, I, think, I do think that. I think the environment that you're raised in like, okay. helps you understand or helps you build your own confidence. If you're raised always being told like you're not good enough or, or just being put down all the time, like that, you never really learn how to build your own confidence. This is true. <coughs> but what about, um, what about um, pers- personality types? Yeah. Um, of the individual based on, you know, whether they are, um, I hate using this term, like an alpha or like, you know, yeah. like beta, like purely based on who they are. If they are just someone who wants to stay at home and like that's just who they are. Yeah. Is that, could that person have the same confidence or l- less or more? Like, oh, I stumped mm. you. Man. Yeah. Would a person raised on this island, like, no human contact. Are we back on the island? No, but well, it's, 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 it's a good it's, vessel. Right? Let me put it this way: like yeah. somebody's raised on that island, like yeah. Steve dies, and then his children is just <laughs> raised by like by in cows. the island by itself. Is that does that kid grow up to have confidence? Like, who does he need to be confident to? Who's there to measure? Because confidence yeah. is a reflection of how you represent yourself to yeah. other people. If there's no other people, then the second they come back to uh, land, if they do, God willing. They'd be like, you know, who are you? <laughs> is, 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 that, is that the case? Because I think, yeah, it's related to other people, but again, your child on this island by him or herself. What if they, you know, if they, if they wanted to map out the island, mm-hmm. there's a, a sense of bravery there. Or, yeah. Um, they have to be confident within themselves to say, you know what? There's a sense of going out there and going, having the adventure yeah. and being brave enough to, yeah. having the confidence to go explore. Mm-hmm. And that, you don't need people for that at all, mm-hmm. right? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, though, that it's a multi layered question. I think that um, I'll start with a little, you know, with the two cats that we're blessed to have. They're only seven months old. One cat, you know, when we got them, they were what, two, three months old? And then one is just so confident and like he doesn't get scared of anything. When you guys come over, he's here, he's sniffing, he's chasing your socks. We take him to the park, he's fine. And the other cat, was you, you walk raised, around with him, right? Like yeah, yeah, we're outside in public, and he's just yeah. chilling. And the other cat is just—he's terrified of everything. They've had the same upbringing, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um. So I think it's like from a sentient, not sentient. I'm sorry, that's the wrong word. From a from a living being. Uh, what's the word for beings that are living but not? Uh, I sent because plants are living, but they're not. What's the word? Sentient. They have a, is it sentient? What's because sentient? Sentient. they can't like yeah. think. They, they don't know. Think. They're not aware. Well, yeah, they're r- they can brain. sentient. The reptilian yeah. brain of survival instinct. Uh, cats or mammals they got a brain whatever Uh, raised in the same (laughs) circumstances one is just naturally confident I can't understand why and the other one is a little bit of a scaredy cat Um, but then you apply the same thing to humans like you can sometimes just be born and just have something in your brain that's different like the honey badger one of the internet's favorite memes Um, and I've seen also I've seen uh, kids of my friends who the parents were very timid, <clears throat> calm, shy people, and the kids just like one of those ones that just like bust out like, "Yeah, we're playing Roblox today," and you're just like, "Well, <laughs> where did you come from?" And then you get kids from confident parents that are just like really quiet and reserved, yeah. and like, "Hello, hello, sir." Can but I... they, but you don't know the the, the backstory. No, you, you don't. You, you don't know if the if the. I guess the moral of the story parents. is you can be born confident. Yeah. <clears throat> but it can also be nourished, and, um, learned. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not but then either extreme. Could it also be uh, unlearned or diminished? Like, can your well, confidence? I, I think oh, to, sure. To, yeah, to add yeah, to yeah. your point, like the outcome of your experiences kind of yeah. shape you. So, say you were confident, and then you you got like applause by other people. Then yeah. that kind of rewards your brain. Like, oh, you know, I I stood up, and you know, everyone applauded me. So it's yeah. kind of like nurturing that side of your brain. Or, you know, maybe you were confident once and then everyone laughed at you. So then you yeah. feel that sense of embarrassment, shame. So then that's a negative. So then that would kind of cause you to be more kind of introverted and shy. So I think there's a give and take to both. When it comes to, um, when it comes to um, certain athletes, uh, they did an experiment in uh, Jamaica for sprinters. And they're like, oh, they, they talked about what, the fast, fast twitch muscle and slow twitch muscle. But then they realized that... It, a person's body type doesn't really dictate whether or not they are athletic, right? But in Jamaica, it seemed that everyone was just super fast. So, like, is it something about their specific genetics? And it's like, uh, not really. And what it was is that from a young age, um, you know, they're, they're you know, running in school races and stuff. And the entire school 
you know, 500 or 1,000 people are chanting your name. They're screaming, like, you know, go, go, Max, go, Max, go. And that, that boost of confidence pushes you further, right? So you're right. It can, it, it can be, um, it can be uh, instilled in you. For instance, take now the, um, <clears throat> a lot of sports games. I think we're, we're experiencing a weird sense of um, you know, matches between different teams without any fans. And that, like, a lot of people aren't performing the way they should, mm -hmm. you know, because of that. Yeah. Because they don't have the people cheering them. It's the influence of the yeah. group around you. Yeah. It's an influence as well, so. It, like, it just reminds me of, like, I heard this study about, um, <coughs> like, self-confidence. Yeah. And, like, a big self-boost to yourself is, like, without having people cheer at you, is you yourself cheering at yourself. Oh. And, and, and one of the biggest things is actually using swear words. Like when you swear, like oh, fuck, I gotta do this. Like uh -huh. that's a little bit of a confidence booster. I'm gonna take that on editing. Damn, it's a good uh -oh, show. It's sorry. a dry show. Number oh, one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Zeke's, Zeke's, uh, Zeke's. This is uh, Zeke's zesty zinger juice. Zeke's, oh, Zeke's yeah. zesty. Why don't, why don't you juice. allow one? Make it PG thirteen. Allow just one <laughs> f bomb per you took show. It, you yeah, just you took, took it. it. That was selfish. Gosh darn it! I didn't know. <laughs> Go back to your conglomerate. Mega Corp here. <laughs> like, I have the monopoly on, 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 on the cusses. <laughs> no cuss gets through me. <laughs> uh, sorry, you, uh, we cut you off there. Uh, yeah. Go on, go on. I just no, 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 I was just saying, like, okay. that you, you can build your self confidence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without external parties, I guess. Something uh, slightly unrelated, they say, um, related but not really, um, when you're experiencing pain, Swearing comes uh, because um, when you use well, not just swearing. I think just you know positive self-talk. Well, no, this is this is completely yeah. different. Like if you are, you need to put your hand in a bucket of ice. Yeah. But you yeah. swearing, like you can actually last a little bit longer. But mm -hmm. like, um, but don't swear uh, and stay in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think tasteful swearing is okay. I think it's very effective. What's tasteful? Swearing? Tasteful swearing is swearing that's used in appropriate moments. Um, there's like there's tasteful swearing and then there's just like uh, distasteful swearing, like uh, you know when you just say like a when every other word is an F or an S or you know sailor, like a sailor yeah like a sailor, sailor. and sailor. you just do it and that's like your personality but like if you mm -hmm. use it at the right moments like a tone in a beautiful language yeah. mm -hmm. it's perfect and even at the workplace like sometimes you know sometimes, at the uh, workplace we're like there's some moments there's some moments, there's some moments where you just need it to just like say it in this moment and then people just yeah you're right. Um, but like if you're just walking around with a potty mouth, that's no good. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. But uh, if you know when to slip in your F's and S's, then yeah, I think it's powerful and it, is, it does help. It helps mm -hmm. to a lot of things. And it also helps to know that of yourself and also give yourself that uh, pep talk. See, see how I did it? Came, came yeah, back around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Give yourself that pep talk to you know, boost your confidence, which, you know... Uh, Brings us to the next point. Have you guys ever? Do you guys rem remember any? They are embarrassing, or um, any stories where you you had no confidence, or either or either no confidence in another person. Do you guys want to have any memories of that? Yeah, I think that yeah, one of my earliest memories um, in my Swiss cheese brain is when I was younger. I remember when I was born. I wasn't not not confident, but I do remember in elementary school. I had become the target of bullying at a certain age. No way, you were bullying. Yeah, yeah. by by wow. one particular person. But Dude, I, I had... thought I thought you would be a bully. No, so <laughs> man. no, so that's the here's the story. That's my arc. That's wow. my that's my uh, my uh, villain origin story. Um, <laughs> is when I was in high school, I was a good kid, I think, and then I think I became the target of bullying. But I think it was because. I just didn't know how to handle. Yeah. Like I could have probably braved through it, but I just didn't understand why all of a sudden these kids were like, you know, picking on me. And um, I guess it gets worse when you react to it. So it got to a point where I guess it like messed with my confidence. And then I, I think, um, yeah, that when you think about it, that had an effect on life for a long time. It really wasn't until uh, somewhere in high school where I was able to sort of rebuild confidence. Through. By bullying other people. No, well, I did actually. <laughs> unfortunately, yes, I did have bullying tendencies. Yeah. Uh, What's the worst thing you ever yes. did? Huh? What's the worst thing you ever did? Uh, I got suspended in school because I was in high school bullying this one kid, and in the hallway, I didn't like. It was like a nice guy bullying, so like you're being nice, but it's bullying. You know what I mean? And you mean like that or like you know, <laughs> like, uh, like like you know when you're being nice, but it's like in a <laughs> condescending tone. 
If he gets suspended, it doesn't sound like nice. He just nice punch, I, don't, I don't think there's anything in such as <laughs> nice guy bullying. No, it's like, hey, buddy. Like, hey, look at hey, you today. Buddy. Don't I'm not your guy, buddy. <laughs> no, look, he's wearing his nice shoes today. What, did mommy dress you up? And um, okay, okay. this one kid just had enough, and he just punched me in yeah. the face. And uh, I was like, yo. Uh, but the, he, you, you pushed him to the point where he had enough. Like, Yeah, for sure. I did. Look, man, That's we all right. change. There, we do change over life. This is my villain arc, mind you. Do you feel guilty about, about that? I do now in retrospect. Well, yeah, that shows growth. Control, but like, look, I think, you know, one thing on the show, we'll all find out a little bit more about each other, how we grew up and what changed within us. Yeah. And I was a bully for a little because I was uh, projecting. And yeah, then I got suspended because we fought in the hallway. Um, well, he punched you. Did you fight back? I did. Wow. Yeah. 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 It turned into a whole thing in the hallway. Everyone's wow. surrounding. And um, yeah, so uh, it was a projection. And if I, I always do remember being bullied as a kid. I remember having my little bully saga. But then I remember positively gaining confidence again through self-ritualistic, you can, you know, whatever you want to say, just positive <coughs> reinforcement. But uh, mm. it can change. It can all change. Do you, oh yeah. do you feel that you were um, bullying this kid, hey, buddy, because of a lack of confidence in yourself? or? Oh, totally, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, it wasn't like, because in high school, you know, you get, you're in that uh, pre-pubescent phase and then you hit puberty. Yeah. And then my freshman and maybe sophomore year, I, I was still, I guess, a late bloomer. So I was still kind of, bleh. but then all of a sudden, I think it was the summer of sophomore year, I all of a sudden just got really athletic and like right, strong right, and ripped. Right. And then I had a really good string of athletic um Two years in junior and senior year, and then I had a little bit more confidence. Because you you played every sport, right? I played a lot of things. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, I remember you telling me that. Yeah. But yeah, I was in wrestling. I was yeah. in rowing. I was I was just playing everything. Mm. But before those freshman and sophomore years, super insecure. Oh, for sure. But um, yeah, man. Also through it was it was a uh, it was I it was really going into myself and reinforcing myself that I was able to turn it around for sure, thousand percent. It, it all came from inside. Like just going on this mission, like I will be confident, I will be um, charismatic, I will be calm, collected, blah, blah, blah. And then I used to repeat this to myself every night before going to bed for like two years, <laughs> I swear. And all of a sudden I would wake up and yeah, I would be a little bit more confident, a little bit more, That's uh, good. more few more friends every year. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, so it can happen, you can change. Yeah. Yourself, Max? It's kind of like a, a mental muscle, you gotta practice yes. it, you gotta hone it. Like That's right, habit, yeah, 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 you know? that's right. <coughs> And I think, as I said before, it comes from your experiences in, in any endeavor you do. When you start, you kind of have to humble yourself a bit and, and, and have the patience with yourself to be like, okay, maybe I suck at this, but I'm just going to practice a little bit more. You know, mm -hmm. um, Francisco, like you mentioned with running, like running was something I picked up this year during the whole COVID lockdown. And when I first started, I, was, I could barely run 3K and I was out of breath. Yeah. Had to walk like a grandpa, like... <sighs> and the next day I, I go okay I, I did 3k let me go 5k so ran. you ran the, the very next day the very next day you know just keeping at it you know the gyms were closed I was like how else am I going to exercise I got to do something so yeah. next day I, okay I, I made it 3k let me let me push to do 5k and yeah the next day I after two days I was like okay maybe, maybe I need to chill for a bit but then after that, I was like, okay, I did 5K, let me let me try doing six. And then you slowly build from there, and I think that's where you kind of gain confidence, is having that previous experience, it kind of adds to, um, I'm gonna steal something from uh, David Goggins, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of the man's toughest man in the world. He, he talks about his cookie jar. Oh. No, of, um, never heard of that's, that's just you, man. I've heard of David Goggins, but I've like... So David Goggins, uh, you Google him, look him up, but he's basically this badass, like, former Navy SEAL, Did Army Ranger. Uh, oh, I think I've heard him. Yeah. So. Uh, Big, which, bald guy? That's he's, Joe Rogan. No, no, there's another one. There's another Navy SEAL that always talks about, like, but, Joe um, Rogan, You know, he's done some crazy <laughs> stuff, like, you know, he never trained to run uh, 100 miles before, and he, he did it, yeah. and... and um, yeah, but he was a Navy SEAL, though. Yeah, so, I mean, but because he was a Navy SEAL, he kind of had that confidence. So, kind of going back to my point of, like, you have this, and he, he says in his book, Can't Hurt Me, great book, by the way, you should read it. Um, you know, having this cookie jar of experiences that whenever you're going through a tough time or, or lacking that confidence, per se, 
you kind of reach into that memory of that cookie jar and, and you, you remember, okay, like there was this one time I, I got through this and then, and then you kind of kind of hone in and, and you apply it. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah okay. I, do, I do believe in that whole idea of like you build leather on your back, like yeah, like yeah. all your experiences you know. like amount and like you, you know, he calls yeah. it like mental calluses. Yeah, yeah. mental calluses. Huh. I mean, rough. Yeah, you go through things and then suddenly like you're in a situation where like okay, I've gone, th- I've been through this before. I'll be yeah. okay. Like, is this your villain story we're going into? Can you no. zeke me? <laughs> zeke. Uh, but um, that brings me on to another point. Um, what what happens when you need to go into something that you've never experienced before, the complete unknown, right? Uh, There's a sense of confidence that you have to have to experience it. Your son on the island uh, by themselves, right? Michael Davidson. Michael Davidson. Um, Half cow, half man, half bear. (laughs) Half man, half cow, all Steve. (laughs) That's right. They would would, um, be wanting to, you know, let's say for a couple of years, they've built up confidence. They're now exploring the island and, and, you know, Doing their doing whatever it is they, they do on a daily basis, then all of a sudden they're thrown into an unknown situation. They discover a cave. Now they want to go and explore because they have this 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 you know um, as we said the, the the mental calluses right. The they have the experience to explore, but now it's something completely unknown because he's been walking around the island with the sun shining, birds singing, but now he has to go into a dark cave. No light and no. You know, uh, no spear, no nothing. He just has to go into something completely unknown with no experience. And that's that's kind of, I think, where confidence really you know steps up. Where you have to actually, you have to actually say to yourself, "Damn, I don't know what's gonna happen, but shucks, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna go for it." Right. This is like the reverse allegory of the cave. That's right. That's right. You want to go back into the cave. You started in the sun, now you're going into the cave. You, you never know what's in, in there. You're coming out to the sun. I love, I love uh, that the hero's thing where the treasures you seek the most are in the ca- The treasures you seek are in the cave you fear the most. And I always mess up like that. Like Batman, when the uh, bats are coming. Batman Begins, do you remember that scene? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, you bring up an interesting point because I think, you know, we're, as humans, we're always conditioned to, you know, the, the plight and then the reward, you know, the quote unquote, the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. But what if there is no light? And in that, this case that you're describing, you have to be your own light. And I know that sounds really metaphoric and a little bit cheesy and cliche. But, you know, if you're if you know, you're going through the, this unknown situation, you know, let's let's, you know, from metaphoric terms like the darkness and, and you, you don't see a light at the end of the tunnel. What, what else are you going to do? Yeah, so, that's a good point. Yeah. So, I mean. Because something that I've thought for myself is I would love to be thrusted in a situation. Um. (laughs) (laughs) I I thought the same thing. I just thought of you. (laughs) Place with that air situation. (laughs) (laughs) But like, like in a situation. Yeah, Yeah. thrust into a situation where like. Like you're forced to have confidence or not. Like I, like if I was in a tsunami, earthquake, war, or stranded on an island, stranded on an island. Like, like, how will I react? Like, what kind of person am I in that situation? Right. Because right. with the cave example, like you have the choice to go into the cave or not. Yes. But what if you're you're placed into that where you have to have the confidence to look survive? Yeah. You know? I, I don't know because I, I've never been in that situation. I like to believe that I'll be heroic and I'll survive and I'll like save of people. Course, of course you want to do that. But, but know, the reality could be that I also chicken out and like... Or you become the overlord and the villain. And yeah, maybe. A warlord. Like, you either die the hero or live long enough to become the villain. Yeah, exactly. Wow. You're just hitting us with the Full of DC <laughs> references. I love it. I love it. Um, uh, that, that actually happened to me. The first time I came to to Hong Kong, I was terrified. I was completely scared. Yeah. And for six months, I didn't do anything. Um, it wasn't until like 18 months into being in Hong Kong did I actually have the courage to go up and just start talking to people, yeah. which I do now. Right? I do. Um, that's, that's how we it's met. It's your thing. Yeah, yeah, that's my thing. That's his thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah. 2011, when I first got here, terrified. I yeah. was that zero confidence, right? But then I realized that I just have to do it 
You yeah. Know? There's no, there's, there's not, there's nothing else. I was literally thrown into big city. Mm-hmm. And I was just a farm boy. You yeah. Know? I was like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I need people like Phil in my life, like because yeah. I'm actually, <clears throat> despite my personality, which seems, but it seems to all of our thousands of viewers. I'm quite, I am quite introverted to be honest with you. It manifests more like I just like, uh, I like to hang out with people I know and like, but I generally like to always hang out with one or two people that are way more outgoing than me mm-hmm. because I just don't like sometimes I, I, I don't like it's, I do have social anxiety. So really, yeah, I do. I do actually. Um, you know, you carry yourself very well. I, it's, it's all, it's all really meticulously yeah. executed. It's like, uh, I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you. That's right. But yeah. Phil just goes out there and he's just like, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, it's, it's and practice, right? it just makes right? it easy it, it, to kind of like um, piggyback on his energy, which is it, a very natural confidence now. And it's good to have like, there's people like that that are fantastic for a social dynamics. I mean, I think, you know, awesome, being man. comfortable uncomfortable is a skill and you got to just get your reps and in. being uncomfortable is a skill yeah being comfortable being uncomfortable yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yes, a good thing no, that's, that's a very good thing yeah it's really the you way know? it is and you know like you said when you first arrived you were probably shy but you you forced yourself to yeah right and i'm sure the first few experiences you know probably weren't the best and you that's were right. like kind of shy and awkward but you know you slowly kind of you know, it's like me kind of running that 3K panting, and then yeah. you're like, okay, all right, all right, I took the first few steps, talked to some people, and then you kind of, you get more comfortable being in that kind of awkward space of introducing yourself, mm-hmm. telling people about your story, like, you know, I'm, I'm Phil, I'm from Zimbabwe, and, and yeah, look at you now. I got a mustache you, you, and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. So, um, you guys, I just... Boosting me up, hey! Give me, give me, like you know, yeah. A bit of and blue. you look good in blue. <laughs> I do, you know. I feel, I love blue. You know, you're really boosting my ego. Ah, oh. see what I did there. Oh. See what I did there. Oh. Yeah, man. Yeah, good. Cutting person. in. <laughs> uh, so ego. Also, just I acknowledge all of you. Yeah, it's really, it's really special. I had a tough day today. So, um, ego. The definition is a person's sense of self. Esteem or self-importance. Damn, that's that's pretty. Um, but it's deeper than that. It is. It's deeper than that. It's it evil. is. Um, it's evil. Didn't uh, Gambino say uh, what he said? Uh, I took the G out your waffle. Now all you got left is your ego. Mm. And I was like, oh wow, that was a heavy lyric, man. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was gonna say EO. <laughs> <laughs> because there's two Gs. So, uh, is that gonna work? <laughs> You took one G. I took one G. I put off. the G. The G. Out, yeah. So, what do you guys define as ego? You said evil. Man, it sounds it sounds really similar. Evil ego. E- ego evil. No. How how would you guys define the ego? You know. Um, I think the way I always think about ego is yeah, it's not it's not a a good trait, right? It's self absorbed, like mm-hmm. selfishness, like me before everybody else. Which is, is not wrong. Like You should always put yourself in front of everybody else. That's a very else, uh, Western, if not... Uh, yeah, it's a very American way of thinking. Yeah. Modern modern is a term. It's very modern. Is it though? Because that's not... Western only, not in Asia, for sure, where we all stay. They say modern because it is the dominant form of society, form of thinking, which is heavily Western. Ah, okay. Yeah. There is a form of ego in... China, at least, which is face, but we could talk about that in a bit. It's similar because in the East, they always like to say we're about collectivism. We're well, not about ego, but there is a thing here called face, which we could talk about in a bit. I think it's a bit of a stretch in, for this moment. In Scandinavia, there's something called yantelo, which basically means that you're not supposed to show off. You're not supposed to have ego. Right. You're supposed like it's a community. Mm. Yeah, that's that's that the, the unwritten rule. Mm. I like that. Now, okay, but. That's flexing though, like you're not allowed to flex. You can't like show yeah. up in your. But people do it anyway. Of course. Yeah. But yeah. Why not? they say they don't like to do it, but they do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know. It's human nature, right? Yeah. And it comes out in various forms. Whether you're right. like deliberately flexing, or then, oh, I can't flex, and then you're gonna start acting like passive aggressive, and that's you know, in itself another form of kind of just that negative behavior where yeah, you yeah, feel yeah. kind of that, as the definition said, self importance, right? But, you know, ego, self-importance outwardly 
is like the way it's really commonly perceived. It wasn't until I read a book, I was going through a struggle. I'm not pitching this book. It sounds very self-helpy. Okay. I probably brought it up to a couple of you guys before when I was going through a hard time a couple of years ago. Maybe it was a year and a half, two years ago. A really hard time. I had to dig deep into something. I wasn't really feeling comfortable with anyone else helping me in this direction. I knew it had to come from myself. Mm-hmm. So I found this book called The Power of Now. Let's all just yeah. talk. Let's all hold hands wow. and talk about this. It's a, it's a good one. Wow. Let's all just hold hands. Bye, yeah. <laughs> my Lord. So I listened to the audio book. Anyway, point is, um, the way it was defined in the book actually makes sense and lasts to this day for me. Where this monkey mind we have in our head, the subconscious that is always telling us we can, we can't. Well, sorry, we can't. The one that's always kind of pulling us back. That's the ego. So we have two beings. We have our ego, yeah. which is our deep self-conscious, yeah. and we have our being, which is who we want to be in our true first authentic, mind. genuine self that's been and like... And that's like you, the way we are to each other. But yeah. then like, you know, like, damn, Steve didn't offer me enough wine tonight. But like, you know what I mean? Oh, wine. Uh, Zeke's. Oh, so, oh, I always Strike break one. Oh, strike Zeke, one. we love you. Um, but <laughs> so the ego is the part of you inside that you... Tr- there's two yous. You're trying to... Sh- you should shut off. And if you shut that off in some religions and philosophies, they call that uh, enlightenment is you just being able to muffle that out. Mm. So the focus of this book is understanding that that exists and then working to actively shut it down over a very long time through meditation and self-awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So it's not just this guy like, you know, buff Chad. It's like the inward. Where does it come from? Mm. And once you defeat that, that would be like the next phase of evolution. When we break away from our ego and we can just focus on being one with the world. Imagine a world where we didn't, imagine a world where it, as humans right now, it's all about what's good for me, which is like where this warlike culture we have comes from. But imagine if we turned the table and it was, we had the same desire that we had for selfishness we had for each other. What if I was just dying to help you? And my priority in life was just to help you and make sure you were happy. That would be perfect. That yeah. that is my perfect society. Yeah, yeah. Like completely right. And a lot of um, a lot of African cultures are still like that. Yeah. Uh, for instance, if you if you go to uh, my family village. Yeah. Um, it's the weirdest thing, man. You you arrive, and then they don't talk to you mm-hmm. until you know. Then they send some kid off, and he has to go get some like water, pump some water from somewhere, and only after they have you know fed you some water do they finally say hey how's it going Mm -hmm. because they're like you must be tired from this long journey you made in your Mm -hmm. air-conditioned vehicle to this village and then you know they they feed you they they give you water and then they'll go kill one of their animals right to cook for you and it's all about treating this person Mm -hmm. as opposed to nowadays it's like someone comes to like your house it's like oh why why are they here you know but that just it's completely shifts so that still exists in the world, you know? Right? Really? Is it genuine? It's 100% genuine. Or is that because it's like a, is it a cultural pressure? It's, it's, a, it's a cultural thing, but it's genuine in the sense that they genuinely just want you to relax and chill before you, they start um, interacting with you, right? Do you think that this happens become, because some cultures aren't exposed to the level of consumerism that some of us unfortunately have been? Absolutely. And the, the whole idea of consumerism, like or capitalism, the, yeah. the modern society we live in, is the self. Yeah. Right? We always self. talk about yeah. it. Treat yourself. But, but also you like, know, like, like the self in, certain, in, like materi- in, materialistic, in a materialistic perspective, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like w- one of my favorite TV shows is Star Trek. And I love Star Trek because I love that idea of the future where it's like, it's not like materialism in humanity has disappeared. It doesn't exist anymore because yeah. people have these nice grown. spaceships and shit. No, no, but 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 society, humanity has grown to 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 uh, cherish the values like exploration, like the betterment of the self, but not based on materialistic wealth. It's like because they have uh, they've taken the need for anything, right? Yes, and then it's energy and like even food. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, like yeah. the federation takes care of everything, yeah. but there's also the sense that like it's all about like. The self improvement of, of of humans as a race. Well, not just humans. Everyone. Everyone. Right? Yeah. everyone. Why do the Klingons no, hate on everyone? Though? No, mm-hmm. but the the, Vol- the Klingons and the Max, Max <laughs> is just like that's the real question. No, <laughs> the Klingons don't hate on anybody. Oh, the Klingons and the Federation are allies. I'm the so Vulcans so are hey, the ones. Spoilers. Listen, that's let's that's bring Max into this. Know, right? No, but. But at least in, in Star Trek universe, like the Federation and, and what humanity represents is supposed to be like the best of humanity, which is like we've moved past materialism. It's all about like developing ourselves, but 
in like yourself like not developing yourself through others as opposed to through self yeah, through others but also like your skills like yeah, your yeah. everything's taken care of so if you want to be a musician you can actually be a musician if you want to own a restaurant you can own a restaurant That's like right, it, yeah. it's all taken care of but uh, you're not competing with your fellow humans because i have more wealth than you like we all we're all equal basic yeah. income yeah mm. This is what happens. Universal basic now income. UBI. Mm, that's right. <laughs> but but in this world, there's also like I said, like the need of material materialistic needs are, like humans have gone past that. We're past that. Yeah, we're past that. We're here in the now, now, yeah. now at this moment. Yeah. MVC. What ego do you see? <laughs> <laughs> is this the power? Is that just the power now, man? I'm acknowledging you. <laughs> These these help help um, um, books and stuff. I think it's it's really a, it's a marketing tool. They're just looking for profit yeah. as much as they can get, right? Because when they sell to the self, better yourself. You yeah. know, do this so that you feel good. Today I saw a beautiful beautiful billboard for Canada Goose. Yeah. Those jackets are expensive, oh. but gosh, I want one. You know, yeah. you know. And now it's getting a little chilly. You know, winter's yeah. coming. I'm just like, man, no good old looking all white yeah. Canada Goose. Are you kidding me? Right. If you if you zoom in the camera at that moment you said these self will be you'll see dying inside. <laughs> <laughs> I really buy into this shit. And and they, they feed the ego. They yeah. they are they're saying they're You're saying, gonna look good in this day. Yeah. You're gonna feel good. You're gonna feel so good. Yeah. You're gonna be, you know, more important than, you know, psh, North Face. <laughs> yeah. How dare you wear North Face? <laughs> Can it I, I have a North Face. <sighs> That's okay. North Face is good. Yeah, North like Face it. is good. Yeah. Gives you warmth. Yeah, 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 it's goose feathers. <laughs> down, as we call it. It's called down, yeah. Canada goose is also down, and fox, hmm. but, which uh, the Peter people will not like. But we we love you. Ego, ego is really an evil thing. It really is, and I truly believe one of the, actually to be honest with you, um, I truly believe it's the main villain <laughs> in our lives as humans. Yeah. Yeah. Ego. Everything, every problem we have is derived from the ego and the ego I truly believe now is that tiny voice inside of all of us that just says you can be better but in a selfish way you need more um, the thing that keeps us anxious when we're when we have downtime because we're not hunter-gatherers anymore we're not foraging for food we just have this downtime and we have this voice in our head which a lot of us haven't learned how to shut down and it just causes all of this you know, who is an outgoing president of the United States. That was all ego. Yeah, and imagine yeah. if somebody with less of an ego was in office at that time, or even earlier, you know, who yeah. would have thought more for the world. Um, we don't want to get political, but for sure, you know, if you think back to 2000, if Al Gore, a guy that put himself out there for global warming, was president, how different would, would the world have been if he had someone that wasn't egotistical back and, and that's such a power. So I believe the ego is the biggest fight of our time. It is, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to shut it down because um, what ends up happening is uh, to shut down the ego is to say that you are not important. And if you don't feel, to shut down the ego is to say that you are not the most important, yeah. right? And when we do that, we, we actually lose confidence a bit, right? Because you realize, oh, dang, like, I don't really matter, you know, so, you know, I, I'm not really needed in all this. And it kind of comes back to um, what you were saying earlier. If, when the ego focuses on the self, if we, if we focus on that, then you get, you know, tyrants like who, um, who, 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 who shall not be named. They dictate countries, <laughs> right? I came from a country that had a dictator as well. And it was, he got to the point where he said, he will not um, <coughs> step down until he chooses a successor. Mm -hmm. You're like, how's that a democracy? Mm -hmm. You know, it's about voting, right? And that's the ego talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happened to my nation? Well, read the history books, right? Or yeah. you know, let, let's look at another case that you guys can relate to. Um, Antonio Brown, you know, Yo, look at him. He's in my squad. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, without getting too much into football for our non-football fans out there, you just, know, just uh, give us a brief history. He basically, on you know, had a Hall of Fame career ahead of him. Like, you know, best wide receiver for you know, basically from what. 2014 to 2018 had you know prolific stats and then basically after what 2018 started to get a little bit cuckoo and basically 
his ego kind of getting in the way has has basically prohibited him from playing in the league for the last two years. Right. And might have been and, some mental health though. I mean, Maybe yeah. I love you. You know, yeah. my spot. but you know, w- without getting too far deep into it, I think this is this is the case in point of 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 how, you know, you could be you know, the best in your your field, your industry, but you know, when you let ego get in the way, it, yeah. it basically, you know, he hasn't been on a team for the last two years because no 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 coach wants to take a risk on him, and I think this is a case in point of of what you're saying about how e- ego is evil. Right. He's in the Buccaneers now, so we don't seem like a dated child. <laughs> <laughs> we were at one point. We were... No, but I mean, he's you know, after two years later, like you know, I, let, let, let's hope he can kind of get his act. Yeah, I'm praying for him. Yeah, you know. So if he, let's say he um, he listens to his podcast and um, <laughs> please listen to it. Nah, nah, <laughs> did, eh? And then let's say he removed the the I from his his vocabulary and put the we and put the team forward, where it's no longer the AB show is now. The Buccaneers, AB being Antonio Brown, and the Buccaneers, the team he plays for. Yeah. How successful would they be? You know, where you know he doesn't need the glory as much for his ego. Like he would definitely like they would be a formidable team. But right now, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. That's yeah. why Tom Brady took him in. <laughs> Can't Brady to take the eye out of Antonio? Now you're Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now I oh. hope. But uh, how can we actively combat ego? And it, it's not a fair question because um, some of us, some people, I wouldn't say some of us, I'm not certainly too privileged, but some people are very privileged to the point where I feel like they should have the time to actually stop and think. I've made so many achievements in my life, how can I be a better person? But they choose not that, to take that path. How can people in general choose to f- combat ego? Um... By, and this is the craziest thing. If you want to remove the ego from yourself, stop thinking about yourself. In, in any relationship, we've all been in, in you know, romantic or intimate relationships with different people where you get into, a, you get into an argument or mm. you know, a disagreement and the ego steps off, your pride yeah, steps yeah, off. You yeah, don't want to Holding on to that pride, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the first thing that happens is you say, you, you, you separate the two people. It's now me versus you. I versus the other I, right? And it's just a, uh, an argument between between that. Mm. Me, 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 and to protect myself. Mm. Imagine if when that happened, as an argument started, you said, let me think about the other person, right? Between that and never having an argument when you're hungry, there'll be no fights ever. Yeah. Because, you know, as soon as you stop thinking about yourself, how you've been victimized, yeah. how, or not even just that, how... Stop thinking about yourself and, and just see other people. It'll change the game yeah. completely. You know? There's this thing uh, called, um, you've got, I'm sure you guys have heard of it, called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Have you heard yeah, of it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Where yeah. Wi-Fi is at the bottom, but clearly. Uh, <laughs> by then I'm at the bottom because there's no Wi-Fi here today. It's one of marketing's um, top 10 bullshit words. <laughs> <laughs> Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs? Yeah, I'll send you the article. Oh, please do. Oh, yeah. Put well, in there, the link. There, we'll put in the... There's, um, there's definitely yeah. some... Yeah, yeah, yeah something to it because so, it makes sense because what it means is you know the hot there's a pyramid right. it's what shelter food the, at the yeah, bottom the, and then as you the get needs on the bottom and yeah. then privilege on the top and the less you need to worry about those pillars below you the more you can start focusing on altruism like think of a bill gates for example this guy's billions of dollars and he's chosen allegedly chosen that we don't know what he does behind the scenes but he's publicly chosen the path of helping the world solve problems malaria diseases toilets all these things um, because he doesn't have to worry about basic income anymore. Yeah. And then you have people at the bottom that are fighting for scraps that need to be selfish. So you, it's basically saying you can't focus on being a better person until you have the basic needs covered. Mm. So I don't really, when you look at these, like when you look at certain people in certain classes, you kind of have to look at them with a degree of empathy because they really don't have the means to be a better person yeah. if you think about it. Yeah. But then you look at really, truly so people that have the means and you're like, nah, you you don't need to be that rich. You know, mm. you, you could be giving back more. You hear these foolish stories about mm. these uh, conglomerates, um, Le- <laughs> Lex Corp. Lex Corp. Um, I mean, Lex Corp. that just want a nickel and dime. You know, their employees mm. make them work harder, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, it's a path at that point that you choose. But, yeah. Yeah, indeed. Um, is there... Do you guys feel that um, going into the new year, 
2021, which is literally a month away. Mm. How, how are you guys going to handle your your egos going to this one? Because, um, you know, uh, we, we all have it, but the fact that we see it, you know, means that we got to at least do something about it, right? Mm. For instance, I, I think, right, I just, I had to sign a new contract, right, because of the oh, right. change. And I was very, very confident in, like, the life I was going to have. But then I got an email today saying, this is your new, you know, your new, new life. New, new life. Yeah. Very brave of you yeah. to talk about this. By yeah, the way. man. And it, like, seeing, seeing the figures of, like, um, the, the salary, which took a big knock, you know, um, and, and my benefits and all that. Now I'm like, man, like, I, I, feel, I feel a, a little um, worried and scared not confident basically or like that I can now go forward and do these things. But then I also realized that if I look behind, man, I, I used to live in a room and I think I'd get like 3000 Hong Kong a month. And that was, that was my life for like two years. Right. So I've done it before. Mm. I can take from that cookie jar and be like, yeah. I'll be okay. Ooh. So looking, looking forward into 2021, I saw that email today. I was like, Oh, like it was a big hit. And I was like, man, how am I going to do this? And I realized actually I can do this. And yeah. it's, I, I've done it before, and it isn't about being you know, beating my chest saying, "Oh, I'm gonna be the you know, the one who to overcome everything." I now see it as I'm gonna be able to get through this, and you know, it's it's, it's not just about me anymore, right? It's it's everyone's going through it as well. Yeah. So why not you know rely on others? Mm-hmm. It's okay to live with another person in your 30s now because hey, man, rent's expensive, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's a uh... It's not a ego thing. It's just a confidence based on experience. I I was very egotistical when I saw the yeah. new figure. I was that hurt my ego because I, yeah. like, I, I I I was it's forty percent less. I was like, wow, you know. And the, um, I was like, how can I pay for my how can I pay for my family? How can I pay for my holidays? Yeah. How can I do these things for me, 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 me? I was like, no, it's not just about me. You know, yeah. Everyone's going through this, so yeah. So yeah. I would say to kind of add to your point, hindsight is twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sad that when, when, you're, when you decided to become a pilot, didn't you know that there was going to be a pandemic, man? Like, I didn't. Man. So hindsight is twenty twenty. You know, it means you know. I, Where's Captain Hindsight? <laughs> <laughs> Captain hindsight. Uh, you know, we all sometimes don't act our best in, in moments, and you know, we let our ego consume us, and and you know, as you said before, holding on to that pride. But I always like to look back and think. Was I acting like a child? Because I feel like ego really is that inner child, that inner child throwing a tantrum, and you're just like, no, I'm, I'm right. Fuck everyone else. But really, if you look back in that moment, and, that was, and that was, we've surpassed our... Oh, yeah. but, but maybe... Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Hey, but, but land your point, land your point. Yeah. So, you know, I, I always <laughs> like to look back and, and ask myself, was I acting like a child? And mm-hmm. if the answer is yes, then that's, that's, that's where you draw the line between confidence and ego. That, that was definitely a moment that you need to be like, okay, I need to keep my ego in check. Yeah. And then the next time something similar comes up, you can kind of take a deep breath, take a step back, and, and you kind of just let it go. But Phil, maybe, maybe your situation wasn't necessarily being egotistic or, or it wasn't ego. It was like, because if you think about it, like you had a contract with a company, you agreed it, market rate, whatever. Like, like you're, not, you're not being selfish in the sense like give me more money. You're not looking down on people. Like you're not, you're not being selfish. You're, you're, fight, you're upset because you're losing what you already agreed to have. You're not asking for more. Like... For me, being egotistical is being like, I want more. I'm the winner. Like, okay. I will put people down. Mm. I will put people down to get what I want. Yeah. That, to me, is like ego. Yeah, I like, like I, from, for me, your situation is like, you, you had an agreement with a company. Yeah. The agreement, the, the company is like screwing you over. Uh, it's, I mean, everyone's going through this. Yeah. Um, I, it was actually, um, yes, you're right, but it, it was ego. It because hits. I, but I think it more, it's more confidence. Damn. It hits your confidence. He woke up, he's like, I've dealt with this. <laughs> now you've come. And he's like, Dude. no, uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, for me, yeah. it was the fact that I'm like, I, I fly for a respectable airline. Yes. Like, I am not these LCCs, these low cost carriers. <laughs> I am not yeah. like that. <laughs> All right, maybe that's. And then, yeah. Take your jokes out. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, we, we're now making market rate yeah. as with everyone. And now it's like, no longer are you this, you know, 
this like uh, high flying Top Gun dude. Oh. You're just like everyone else. Yeah. And I realized I we were very, very egotistical. We would yeah. walk around and say. We are. We fly for the company. <laughs> what are yeah. you, Panda Air now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. But now I was like, oh, we're just like everyone else now. And that that for a lot of people, they they you know for thirty years they've been working with this company, and for them it's harder. But for me, it's yeah. only been nine and a half. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I see what you're saying, but yeah, but just to well, kind of I mean, ego, ego can stem from not wanting to face the reality, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And there was an attitude. 30th of November. This one only has three more minutes left. And this okay. Is done okay. Cool. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, there we go. That's. We'll pick this up next Damn, week. Damn, we can yeah. just end on that note. I yeah. know. I know. That's after show notes. Yeah. Phil's vlog. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, let's catch what Steve's half cow, half Steve, half human baby is gonna look like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess I think what what should be this is a really heavy topic. Maybe maybe we just pick this up next week. Yeah, and then yeah. just All continue, right. continue from here. Damn, right. the show lives on. The episode lives on. Yeah, yeah. and it's the great. saga continues. The, the saga, saga never ends. <laughs> <laughs> the saga never ends, and the saga continues. Guys, right. thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Like and subscribe. <laughs> that was long though, eh? That was good though. That was very long. It didn't have any downtime.